I'm Chris Hoy, Olympic cycling champion and lifelong fan of rally driving. Now I'm going to retrace the steps of one of my all-time sporting heroes, 90s rally legend, Colin McRae. Colin McRae is straight up a god. That guy's amazing. With the help of his friends and family. Yeah, it's spectacular. I'm on a mission to uncover. Wow what made him such a revered driver. <laughs> By attempting to drive like Colin, yeah, you're doing all right. I'll discover a man who lived life to the limit and drove to the limit too. Like all geniuses, he had his flaws, but he was respected around the world. Colin was definitely one of my biggest inspirations. Now I'm going to experience the Colin McRae story from the driver's seat. Right now, because I've taken up riding, it's just it's so much fun. As a professional cyclist, I've been crowned world champion 11 times, an Olympic champion on six occasions. But that doesn't stop me looking for the next big thrill. This is my purpose-built track car. A toy that helps me feed my love of speed. I think all young boys want to be racing drivers at some point in their lives. I suppose there are similarities between cycling and track driving. If you don't think ahead, then, then things happen too quickly. We've got two laps to go here. Kaczynski of Poland has the head of the race at the moment. I love cycling and I love, I love cars too. Um, so I don't suppose you have to be one or the other. You can, you can be both. Here comes Hoy. Hoy going over the top. Hoang trying to hold him off. Hoang yeah. took him into the middle. Of course, when it comes to driving, I'm just an amateur. But that hasn't stopped me wondering what life might have been like had I chosen a different route. Like Colin McRae. It wasn't just about the winning. Obviously, he was the best driver in his time and he was, he was world champion, but it was the way he did it that was so special. Sadly, Colin died when a helicopter he was piloting crashed in 2007. The tragedy also claimed the life of his son and two other people. But for legions of fans, his success as a rally driver is still an inspiration. Colin was just a born winner. It was all about being the fastest, the best and the quickest. Amazingly, McRae turned a 1 minute 14 second deficit into a 36 second win. When he was behind a wheel, there was nothing else like it. You know, he was, he was in his world, his own world. His legacy will live on because he was an all action hero. How are you going to attack tomorrow? Just attack again, 100%. Sort of it was just flat out all the time. And a runaway victory for Colin McRae and his co-driver Derek Ringer. He was the people's champion. He is going to live on in our memories forever. Colin McRae, 1995 World Rally Champion. Now I'm going to retrace the steps of Britain's first World Rally Champion. And with the help of his friends and family, attempt to drive just like Colin. I'm massively looking forward to the next uh, few days. It's obviously such a tragic story as well that it's going to be, I'm sure, be quite difficult at times too. I don't expect to be any good at rally driving at all. You know, I, I think I'll really enjoy it, but I'm under no illusions that I'm any kind of uh, Colin McRae the second. Before I meet those who knew him best, I want to understand what made Colin McRae legendary. So I'm getting the lowdown from a man who knows what it takes to drive a rally car. Meet American rally driver, Ken Block. Block is a superstar, famous for his trademark urban rally driving, which has become an internet phenomenon. In terms of driving style, Ken is as close as it gets to McRae. So with the help of archive footage, I wanted to grill him on what made Colin tick. The pure appreciation of having fun with a car was something that we shared quite genuinely. We loved to just play with these cars. It was just so aggressive at that time. Mm, and yeah. Colin was definitely one of my biggest inspirations, you know, because of the way that he drove those cars in those days. Well, this is when I first got interested in rally, just when he won the world title. And, you know, he switches on TV and you watch this, you can't fail to be uh, excited by this. The style in which he approached the rally stages, full commitment, absolutely flat out, is spectacular. Bravery seems to be a key ingredient in a rally driver's makeup, and Colin's mantra of if in doubt, flat out often gave him the upper hand. 
but this approach also earned him the nickname Colin McCrash. Whoa. Oh. Oh, so this is Finland. I think he crashed three different times in this rally. There's another one, same rally. Oh. Colin was also the first rally driver to gain notoriety in the USA, helped by his spectacular performance in America's first ever televised rally. Yeah, Colin came over uh, the first year that we had the X Games rally competition. And uh, it was a very exciting time. Our teammate was one of the biggest legends in the sport, Colin McRae. One thing for sure, McRae cannot afford a slip up. Travis Pastrana with the best time. And Colin made just a tiny mistake right at the end of the last stage. And he yes. sent it up. The most amazing thing for us really was you can see him actually downshift from second to first as he's rolling the car. <laughs> the guy just had so much experience and hey, if it does land back on its wheels, he wanted to be ready. Landed on its wheels and he took <laughs> off. He's going after it, can he do it? The car and he lost, I don't know, a second or two. He doesn't do it, he takes the silver! He just did the transition a bit too much on the jump and it, it hooked in in the front and over we went. Dude, Colin McRae is straight up a god. This guy comes out here, throws the car, and I don't even know if he lost time. That guy's amazing. There we go. Another thing Colin is famous for is his computer game. <laughs> Good recovery. The Legends franchise sold over 10 million copies worldwide, making him a household name. Your reactions are quite good, though. That's good. That was a life three. I just hoped my driving would be better in a few days' time, when I'd be doing this for real. I'm not good at talking and driving at the same time. Oh, there we go. And we have a decent crash. My first meeting with the McRae family is at Collins Farm in Lanarkshire the house he and his wife, Alison, made their family home. Hello. Alison. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. To be here today, to meet his family and to see where it all started, it's um, a great privilege. Um, I heard it's always like this, though, in Lanarkshire. Well, it's always like this. <laughs> <laughs> My guide for the next few days would be Colin's dad, Jimmy, who, as a five-time British rally champion, can take some of the credit for his son's glittering career. I'm very excited to meet Jimmy, uh, a legend in his own right, and, uh, you know, I think people talk about him as Colin's dad, but I think they forget that actually Colin used to be Jimmy's son. Um, you know, he was five times British rally champion, a real icon in the sport. Now, this the museum, is where we have it? the cars here at the moment. To my amazement, Colin's treasured car collection is still housed here. It's like an aircraft hangar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's bigger than your usual family garage then. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Wow. It's quite a machine to look at, doesn't it? Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Every car we uncovered revealed another part of this fascinating story. The auto test Mini he drove aged 14. The Talbot Sunbeam he learned to rally in. Wow. This was built for, well, the Scottish Championship it was then. And his first professional car. Uh, you're, you're slightly bigger than Derek. The legacy was the start of his World Championship career. That was a stepping stone into the World Championship. But there was one car that Jimmy had a special connection with. This looks pretty special. Yep, this is the Sierra Cosworth. Ah, uh, yes. This was originally my car. Won the Scottish Rally with this one. Was one and only time. One careful family <laughs> owner. <laughs> Rallied by Jimmy, Colin and his brother Alistair, this family heirloom played a part in all their careers. How did he handle that? Well, that's when he, he beat me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty well, then. He did all right. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> he did all right. <laughs> the thing about this car as well, it's, it's, it's road legal, so I can take that out just now. Is that an offer? That's an offer, yeah. <laughs> what a treat. Jimmy was going to take me back to where it all started for Colin. <laughs> we were going to find out exactly how his son became a rally legend. I know a shortcut here, we'll, we'll, we'll head up this gravel yep. road a bit, it's pretty good. Okay, nice one. And I had a feeling it might be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Colin's driving ability was obviously in his DNA. But I know from personal experience, that it takes hard work to get to the top of your game. 
His story starts on two wheels. By the age of 13, Colin showed promise on a motorbike and had befriended Scottish junior champion Robbie Allen. Could you see in Colin straight away this, this competitive instinct? Was there something about him? The basics around about the balance and the throttle control of a, of a motorbike he had straight away. And what he then was able to do was adapt the skills he had. He very quickly got to the stage where he was a Scottish champion in his age group. I mean, that was within months. Straight away, that showing the sort of determination and the sort of competitive edge that he had. Within a year, Colin had taken the Scottish Junior Scrambles crown, making a name for himself as one of the best young talents in the country. When I was doing BMX as a kid, I always used to look up to the older guys or the guys that were beating me and think, what was it they were doing that was different? Was that the same with Colin? Did he look to guys like yourself? The bottom line is he was better than everybody else in his own age group, so he had to then look at where the next target was, the next kind of challenge for him was. And if the challenge was somebody older, more experienced, then that's where you go. It was great to see so many kids out enjoying the facility here. I mean, uh, who knows, it could be a Colin McRae the future out there just now. Future world champion, even in motocross or anything, it yep, doesn't matter. Absolutely. Yep. absolutely. Even cycling. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> But, to his mother's relief, Colin didn't want to be a motorcyclist. He wanted to follow in his father's footsteps and become a professional rally driver. Well, Colin, you're 19 now and doing your first Lombard RAC rally. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, how old were you when you did your first rally? Just about four weeks after my, after my 17th birthday. Good lord. So you... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't waste much time to any What's it like, Margaret, being surrounded by all this lot? My biggest problem is Colin, because I don't think he knows his limitations yet. He hasn't found his yet. He's got a few rough edges to be fired off. In 1988, Colin entered the Scottish Rally Championship in a humble Vauxhall Nova, one of the slowest cars in the 10-stage competition that year. Jimmy McRae set out for what he hoped would be his winning drive in his major home event. But keeping up with his father's Sierra would be impossible. Never mind challenging that year's favourite. The reigning British champion, David Galandas from Aberdeen. Back again behind the wheel of his four-wheel drive Metro 6R4. Galanders drove a Metro that was so powerful, it was eventually banned. But that didn't stop Colin having a go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And one way. The speed he was able to get out of that little machine was just incredible something. Displaying more than a touch of natural ability, Colin McRae, son of British Open champion Jimmy, was the most remarkable result of the day. Just a few rallies into the season, to everybody's amazement, Colin was keeping up with the big players. So Colin, ninth in the Scottish, you must be very pleased. Very, very pleased. I never thought we'd be back here today in this position. I would have been happy just to win my class, and maybe I, th I thought it would be quite difficult even to get into the top 20 with the competition we had. <laughs> what one's the best, though? I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> then um, Colin and Jim were able to source a Sierra Cosworth. It was capable of, of winning, and we wanted to do that. Now McRae Jr. had a fighting chance of beating Galanders in his monster Metro. Galanders was determined in his attack on the championship lead. He raced on to finish over a minute ahead of McRae. Colin and his co-driver Derek were steadily catching the leader of the pack. Colin was an iconic driver. He had that spark that made people take notice, want to see him drive. Two right plus over crest. All those early days, it was always, this is young Colin, Jimmy's son. But it wasn't so long before it was, this is, uh, this is Jimmy, Colin's dad. <laughs> By the final rally of the 88 season, Colin was poised to win the Scottish title. You or Galanders don't finish today, you win the championship. Yeah, for both of us. I or we win the championship. I have to beat him. And uh, I think he would like to beat me as well. Yeah, it's been good fun. Now he, you've been rallying for uh, the same length of time of, as his age. Yeah, that's a lot of rubbish. I've been competitive for about four years. Uh, I've rallied off and on for about 12. So, you know, we should keep this thing in perspective, I think. The 20-year-old was ready for a showdown. But early in the rally, Gillanders lost control of his mighty Metro. Disaster for Gillanders, crashing on the first stage, out of the rally and the championship. With his rival gone, Colin had won the Scottish Championship. But in a sign of things to come, 
he drove flat out anyway. The laurels then for Colin McRae and co-driver Derek Ringer, and the champagne corks were popping. <laughs> It must be a bit annoying for you, because you were never able to win the Scottish Championship, right? It's true, actually. Yeah. He's, he's done a few things that I've never done, so... <laughs> it's a good omen, maybe. About half a mile from the end of the first stage, we saw Glanders piled off the end of the ditch, so... You could hardly drive to the end for laughing. <laughs> My next meeting with Jimmy is at the Sweet Lamb Rally Complex in Mid Wales. Eventually, I'm going to emulate Colin McRae by driving a world-class rally car. But to get there, I must first learn the basics in a Talbot Sunbeam, which is exactly what Colin did. Basically, this car is just a replica of what Colin uh, started with when he was 18 year old. It's just a nice little car, really. The basic starting point is feel the car moving. Yeah. If you find the car not wanting to turn in, just, give it a little just a wee jab at the handbrake. To bring the nose in. Yeah. To the handbrake around that one. Yeah. You wow. can just to keep it in a slide all the time. Yeah. yeah. That's impressive. Let the clutch back out yep. and back on the throttle. The wheel spin then keeps the car in momentum on okay. the side. Okay. Throwing a rally car around a corner is like learning an intricate dance routine something that Colin had down to a fine art. And everybody heard of a handbrake turn, which we use in a very tight corner. Normally a hairpin, which is just up here. Down into second, first gear, turn, clutch in, handbrake on, clutch out, back on the power. You're ready to go then. Back at Sweet Lamb, I was ready for my attempt at cornering. Okay. Okay, carry on, let's go. Yeah. Very good. You okay? You control the slide with your throttle, basically. See if you can do a, a spin round the spin cone here. Yeah. Right, just brake, 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 throttle. That's it. Keep it going, keep it throttle, 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 throttle. There you are. You're doing all right. I could see how Colin's experiences on motorbikes helped him. Rallying is all about balancing the car and understanding how it reacts to the slightest of movements. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that's it. Very good. That was good. Keep it going, keep it going. That's it. Fortunately, my career in two wheels seems to have stood me in good stead. <laughs> You've got the hand with the handbrake all right now. You can see you taking up rallying. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I can do this all day, can't you? I think that was probably the most fun I've had behind the wheel. Just being a hooligan, sliding about in the mud. Jimmy McRae sitting next to you telling you what to do. It doesn't get much better than that. He's probably better at that than I would be in his, in his push bike. <laughs> but riding a bike is a world away from my final challenge. Driving a World Rally Spec Subaru Impreza. It's going to be more intimidating, it's going to be just bigger, louder, faster. But I think as long as I take it steady and don't get carried away, I should hopefully be all right and keep it on the road. That's the most important thing. I can totally understand why Colin was hooked on rallying. Right now, you know, it's, I, wish, I wish I'd taken up rallying. It's just it's so much fun. Colin was signed by Subaru in 1991. At the age of 23, he was at last a professional rally driver. Starting uh, the 91 season with pro driving Subaru was a major step forward in both Colin and my careers. I don't think it was a surprise. I mean, it was a risk, because Colin was relatively unproven at that stage. He started out in the British Rally Championship, which he won two years on the trot. His spectacular driving style endeared him to the fans. Unfortunately, his new employers had deep enough pockets to keep providing him with new cars. There were a few ups and downs, but you know, generally we were quicker than everyone else. The second year, you know, he won the championship. I think he won every rally. He was already starting to show that really the place for Colin was the world championship. By the 93 season, Subaru were ready to give their young superstar a shot on the world stage. It was, after all, 17 years since any other British driver had won a World Rally. It was that important to Colin, that important to the whole sport. Despite huge investment, the team were yet to win a single rally in the World Championship. There was a, a, a real desperation for this car to win, you know, Subaru had, had, had invested an awful lot of money in the car, so there was a huge amount of pressure. But in the car he'd won two British titles in, Colin was totally at ease. McCrane is now right in the middle of that fantastic five-car fight for the lead. 
he proved that he could fight. That really turned him from a possible leader to the potential winner. McRae is setting a storming pace, over seven seconds faster than any of his opposition on this long, twisting stage, and he moves from fourth to first place. Francois Delacour closes to within seconds. Delacour is driving right on the limit. You could see he felt that this was his time. McRae fights back as they start the last stage. At that point, everyone in the team was in tender hooks, and we were only leading by a handful of seconds. Derek, we have your time, please. As the results came in, the final outcome was impossible to call. It was a nail-biting thing when you were on the other side of the world watching. But Colin had done it. For McRae, a moment to savour. Success at last. Your son has just won his first World Championship rally. It was, it was something very, very special. It was Colin's first win. It was Subaru's first win. It was the start of a new era for Colin and for the team. It really put us on the map. I mean, you've waited a while for this. Yeah, I mean, it's, the whole team has been working so hard for three years now. And he's glad we've got it. I'm sure that's going to come a lot easier. By 1995, Subaru's fortunes were changing. They had a powerful new car, the Impreza, and had signed up double world champion Carlos Sainz to lead the team. So Carlos was able to give us quite a lot of experience as a big driver. He was able to push the team. but. I don't think we'd have seen the best of Carlos if we hadn't had a young gun like Colin. My ambition at the end of the day is to be world champion. If we can continue next year as we have been at the moment, then uh, there's a possibility. To start with, Colin just quietly looked up to him and slightly in awe, but it didn't last for very long. Colin was soon determined to knock him off his perch and prove who was the fastest. An internal sort of battle started to develop between Colin and Carlos. At the head of the field, it's a Subaru war. Colin was uh, one of the toughest teammates uh, I have. Uh, sometimes he was beating me, sometimes I was beating him. Carlos Sainz takes over the lead, but he's been caught hand over fist by Colin McRae. The young Scott with Derek Ringer on the pace notes is driving an absolute stormer. <laughs> With two rallies to go, McRae was just ahead of Sainz in the race for the driver's prize. We were headed for the world title. One of our drivers, either Carlos Sainz or Colin, was going to be a world champion. But Subaru were worried that the fight might end in a crash. In the penultimate rally of the season, the pair were way ahead of the pack when they were ordered to stop racing each other. I had to say, look, guys, I don't need a battle. From here on, you're just going to follow uh, in the order you are now, so it's team orders. But when the order came, Colin was in second place. We're fighting for the championship. Why should I have to finish second? It... There are other issues that come into this. We're running a team for Subaru to win the manufacturer's title, and it would be foolish to fight inside a team. It's the reality of being in a professional team, I'm afraid. Next thing we know, Colin is going flat out everywhere. is inspired. He is going for broke. One thing you can be sure about Conn is that he was never going to, to give up. The Grey reels him in and overhauls him. The Subaru team, sensing that Cray is pressing on regardless, resort to desperate and dangerous tactics to slow him down. McRae has other ideas. In Spain, Colin recorded a faster time than Carlos but his disobedience had jeopardised his chances of winning anything. It's hard to remember what I said in the heat of the moment, but I'm sure I probably threatened that he wouldn't be at the final round of the championship in Britain if he disobeyed team orders and we just gift the championship to Carlos. Colin, on paper, you've won this rally. Is that the situation? Yeah, we've had the book in a minute late now, so we're second. So this was team categoric team orders? Yeah, that's what it was. Colin was forced to give the victory to Sainz, meaning they went into the final rally of the season on equal points. The situation that occurred in Catalonia probably gave us an extra edge on the last round of the championship. You're in an enviable position, Colin being the only Brit.
to be able to bring the World Championship back to your home country? I would be kidding myself on if I said there's no pressure, there is, but I just have to deal with it the best I can and then get on with it and do the, the best job I can. Colin McRae was sounding a loud warning to his rivals. Determined to become Britain's first ever world champion, Colin McRae drove like never before in front of his home crowd. Again, he was posting faster times than Carlos Sainz. He gained another 15 seconds. I can, I can do more at the moment I am driving as fast as I can. Quite simply, he was unbeatable. Colin McRae on course for the world title, pushing the Impreza to the limit, sometimes beyond it. I don't think anybody really took in that Britain could be in with a chance of winning the World Rally Championship, and then he delivered. And it was, it was the biggest moment for British rallying. The spectators lined the forest. It was just incredible to drive through that. Even the sun came out as Colin McRae steered the Subaru safely home to victory. And then when we passed the finish line, you know, the, the feeling of relief was just was incredible. 50. Just stop. <laughs> yes. Spot on. Then the triumphant return of Colin McRae. It was to be the start of a very long party. Colin McRae, the end of an epic journey, 1,500 miles, which has taken him into the motorsport record books. The first man in 13 years to retain the RAC title and Britain's first world champion. You've actually had to be driving flat out, have you not? Probably faster than flat out sometimes. <laughs> in that one. He'd done what no Briton had ever done before and no Scot had ever done before, and he was fiercely proud of that, and he'd become the world rally champion. Soon, I'm going to recreate Colin's famous victory by driving the legendary WRC Impreza. And for my next lesson, I'm at a disused aerodrome awaiting an old friend of Colin's, Ken Block. How you doing, mate? <laughs> That's some entrance. I had to get you started somehow. I'm going to be driving Colin's Super Impreza. So, you got any advice that you give me? Well, the main thing is don't crash Colin's <laughs> cars. <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically, you know, one of the big things of learning to drive a rally car is learning the weight transfer, yep. and how you put the car into oversteer, how you control it, and get the maximum speed out of it. You want to get down the stage as quick as humanly possible. You know, like this. <laughs> It may look like a thrill ride, but this car has been set up to handle just like a rally car would on gravel. <laughs> Using amazing dexterity, Ken was demonstrating how to keep the car perfectly balanced at all times. To succeed in the Impreza, I needed to take note, especially as there was just one obstacle left for Ken to tackle. A Vulcan bomber. So, Chris, how'd you like it? That was amazing. Absolutely, like nothing else I've done, honestly. I was trying to pick up all these things. I was trying to watch you as well as actually where we were going, but literally it was just so aggressive and full on that I'm, you know, and there's tire smoke coming in yeah. and all these, all these assault on your, se on your senses. This car is a little more violent. It actually yeah. slides around. It's a little more dramatic than how you want to drive on the gravel though. <laughs> you know, keeping things in a nice straight line and getting yeah. as much grip as possible is always a faster technique. If you can get that mastered in that car, uh, you should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds easy.
After his 1995 world title, Colin was at an all-time high. There's the bar. And away from the track, he married the girl of his dreams. Yeah, wooing Alison. That was a long-term project. It didn't happen overnight. Every time I went out at the weekend, he was always there in the background asking me out. So. He wore her down and she eventually gave in. Colin had it all. He was the fastest rally driver of his generation, but his inconsistency opened the door to an up-and-coming rival. The new kid on the block was Tommy Mackinnon, who was driving a Mitsubishi Lancer, and that was the car that began to set the standards for the next two or three years. Tommy, many, many congratulations. An absolutely superb drive. Thank you, thank you. Phil is very, very great. I'm very happy. The Finn beat Colin to the world title in 1996, 97, 98, and 99. It's unbelievable feeling. But Colin and the Subaru team didn't like coming second. We had as good a car as anybody, probably better in some events, and uh, circumstance just played against him. No, it was just a disaster. There's no words can describe it, really, when you fought so hard for so many years. To lose it, sort of three k's from the end of the penultimate event is a, it's a disaster. The losses had put Colin's relationship with Subaru under serious strain. I did try looking after him like my own son. I tried sort of battling with him, arguing with him, shouting at him. I tried coercing him. I tried bribing him. I tried anything. I still want to win rallies and win championships. I don't want to have a, have a good wage and, you know, finish third and fourth. I want to win. In the end, the team couldn't stop their frustrated star from seeking pastures new. Yeah, there was quite a, an atmosphere, really. Some of sadness, some of bitterness, upset. And I think it was good for both parties that, uh, that Colin moved on. After a string of near misses, his new partnership with Ford could be just what he needs to take him back to the top. Colin's new employers had high hopes for their latest car, the Focus. They were looking for a very, very high-profile driver for the 1999 season. I had no problem convincing the Ford management that you know, Colin McRae would be exactly uh, what we were looking for. Ford made Colin the highest paid rally driver in history. From a wage of 10 grand at Subaru in 1991 to a three million pound a year contract with Ford in 1999. It was by far the biggest amount that was ever paid to a, to a rally driver and of course the money taught. But Colin had gone from a proven car he knew well to one with teething problems that was unfamiliar. Into water splash, 30, slow three left. And without the firm hand of his old boss to keep him in check, McRae often pushed his new machine beyond its limits. Malcolm was our team boss, that's, there's no doubt, and, and Colin respected that fact. But I think Malcolm couldn't really control Colin. If you give Colin a couple of inches, he'll create a mile out of it straight away. The combination of extreme driving and mechanical failures meant that Cullen finished just three out of 14 rallies in 1999. I think the fact was that when Colin crashed, it generally was end of rally. But his uncompromising commitment to being the fastest was earning him more respect than ever before. Sometimes he, he just pushed that little bit too hard for the win because he was a winner, you know, and God loves a winner. In the sixth level. Colin's approach, you know, win or bust, fastest stage time or nothing, is exactly what the fans want to see. Um, it's what made Colin great. By 2000, Colin had a legendary reputation, but winning championships requires a more calculated approach. His record could have been even better if he'd just taken a, just a slightly sort of more cautious approach to things. But away from the madness of rally driving, Colin was growing up. He and Alison had bought a farm in their home county of Lanarkshire and were starting a family. And McRae's newfound responsibility was changing him as a driver too. Come 2001, he seemed to have finally bonded with his focus. It started to come good. You know, that the partnership began to work. As the season progressed, the car and Colin got quicker and quicker. But standing in his way was a young English star driving for his old team. The battle for the driver's crown was between Colin and Richard Burns. I don't really give a damn who's behind me, you know. I want to I want to do the best I can. No, I just want to win the championship. It doesn't matter who I beat. Obviously, Richard's going to be one of the most competitive people. 
McRae had a big point to prove against the Subaru driver in what was hailed as the Battle of Britain. By the final rally of the season, Cullen led by a single point. All he needed to do was to drive faster than Burns, and the World Championship would be his. It was very much like in a 95 situation. You know, there was no doubt in my mind that, you know, that I was going to win. That day we just more or less celebrating, really. We just, just kind of started to drive around, really. Trees, sky, road, trees, sky, road, bing, bang, bosh. My word, my word, what an accident. But that's Colin McRae. That was it. I mean, it, was, it was absolutely, you know, normally the first thing a driver does is push the start button again. But I knew at the time, I knew halfway through the accident we weren't going to be pushing the start button again. And it wasn't the rally, it was the championship. Once again, after all the hopes and expectations, Colin had pushed it too far. It was hard to swallow, really, you know. It must have made him check himself for the future to realise how stupid I was to throw that away. I made a mistake. I, I cut a corner just a bit too much and there was a, a hole in the inside and it flipped the car upside down. Desperately disappointing for you. Yeah, it's, but, you know, we were trying to win the championship and things like that can happen. I'm just, you know, sorry for the whole team. It was so near, but we haven't got it again. All I will say is take a look at the look on my face. It was Colin's last real chance at the championship. Two years later, he left the WRC to seek pastures new. I'm in Merzouga, Morocco, where Colin came to prepare for his next big challenge. I think a lot of people just, when they talk about Colin McRae, they think about the World Rally, but really his, his career was, was very diverse and he took part in a number of different aspects of motorsport and uh, the Pai Dakar Rally was, was obviously one of the biggest ones that he was involved with. Unable to find the right offer from a WRC team, Colin turned to endurance racing, finishing third in his class at Le Mans before competing in the Dakar twice. The Dakar Rally is the ultimate off-road marathon. The last time Colin entered it in 2005, it stretched from Barcelona through the deserts of North Africa before finishing in Senegal. It seemed that rather than enjoy a little time off, Colin was intent on taking things up a gear. How are you? Good to see you. Good, good. Hey, what was the last time I saw you? <laughs> Just a bit. So what was it about the, the Dakar Rally that Colin found so exciting? You know, he, he had seen from the past, you know, where well, his idol, Ali Vatanen, had, had uh, come from rallying and come to, to Dakar and was very successful. You know, it's, it's a fantastic challenge. It's one of the, the greatest challenges in motorsport to come and do well in, in Dakar. Well, they came actually to here uh, to do some testing in 2004 and 2005 with the, the Nissan Dakar car, uh, because, you know, you've got the, the dunes very close and you've got wide open desert on the other side of us, so it's the ideal place. To me, it seems like the thought of me trying to do the Tour de France, you know, I just couldn't imagine riding for three weeks in a row. You know, I'm a sprinter, do short distance events. To me, that's what it seems like for a rally driver who's used to doing these very short, very intense stages. You wonder why you should, why you would want to do that, <laughs> because it's a, it's a pretty gruelling event. You know, you're talking about 550 kilometres here for a special stage, so it's pretty hard work. I was about to get a taste of the world's longest rally, courtesy of Jimmy, and he lined up a very special vehicle. Developed by Colin's brother Alistair, the McRae Enduro. This beast of a 4x4 is powerful enough to lug through the finest sand, is able to run for 2,000 kilometres on a single tank, can cool itself in the searing heat, and has suspension that soaks up the toughest of terrains. Designed especially for the Dakar, the Enduro is quite simply a beast of a car. I'm sure right. Colin would love to have uh, raced in this then. Yeah, what the family would have liked to have seen would be both Alistair and, and Colin driving this in uh, Dakar at some point and obviously doing well if we could. Right, let's go for it, eh? <laughs> I've no idea what the best way to, to sort of experience what the, the Dakar rally is other than just to get out there in the cars that Colin and the guys would have driven in and, and just to see what the terrain's like. But, you know, this is quite an intimidating environment to do it in. And I think a lot of the danger is just the element of surprise, things that come out of nowhere. 
Where's the cup holder? <laughs> There's no air conditioning either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, let's. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad for diesel. Jimmy didn't start rallying until he was in his 30s, and as a result, he missed out on international competitions like the Dakar. But I had a feeling that had he started a little younger, he would have made a name for himself on the world stage. It's like a big playground, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Lovely. Oh. Sadly, Colin never experienced the thrill of his brother Alistair's creation. But at least Jimmy's been able to get his teeth into this 1.8 tonne monster vehicle. Winning the Dakar requires an equal mix of man and machine. And the true test of that was looming on the horizon. To me, the dunes look like they're the ones that, you know, you could have some spectacular issues up there. No, I think the, the dunes are the most difficult. You need the most experience to get through, and we're just going to head up there now, so I've got very little experience and you've got none, so <laughs> <laughs> let's go and have a look. Scream if you want to go faster. Here we go. Look forward to this. Here we go. It's just looming on the horizon. Know, isn't it? All of a sudden, it's just, it just starts. The Sahara Desert is an unforgiving place, but it wasn't hard to see why Colin jumped at the chance to rally here. In 2005, Colin blew the competition away. By the time he reached Africa, he had built up an unbelievable lead of over five minutes. And on my adventure, Jimmy was also getting into the groove. Woo! I didn't even see that. <laughs> just came out of nowhere. The McRae family truly are a legendary dynasty of ralliers. But the reason Colin was so spectacular was because he pushed his car to the absolute limit. A few stages from the 2005 finish, he wiped out. Once again, his flat out style saw another dream in tatters. The car dug in the sand and then flipped over. Back in the desert, I hoped we wouldn't have a similar experience. But then we got completely stuck. Where did it all go wrong, Jimmy? <laughs> you have got the handbrake on, haven't you? <laughs> it's, not gonna, it's not gonna move far. So if this happened in the race itself, <laughs> obviously you'd be doing it with a bit more urgency, but would this be game over? Or would you be able to do this a few oh, times in the, the three weeks? 35 or 40 degrees of heat. How much effort can you put into it? My respect for Colin was growing by the minute. But then we found a magic button that made life a whole lot easier. So it comes out from the car itself. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Thanks to the car's self-lifting mechanism, it was my turn at the wheel. Just keep your foot flat to throttle. They keep it, they keep it there, first gear. Jimmy is a very brave man. I wanted to make my teacher proud, and if there's one thing I've learned from Colin, it's that in these situations, it's best to drive as fast as possible. <laughs> I saw you grabbing the side there, Jimmy. <laughs> I saw you. Ha, 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 ha!
Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Our day in the desert was over, and what a day it had been. Well, it's been some day. A dozen and a half, eh? <laughs> uh, it's uh, been really worth, worth the trip to get here to just see what it was all about. And this is real special Dakar sand dunes. Apologise for the slight airborne moment we, we took. <laughs> I thought that when you did the airborne moment, I thought we were flying, flying home from there. <laughs> I'm really starting to understand how versatile Colin was as a driver and his ability to turn his hand to anything, you know, with an engine. He could get into it and he could, uh, he could do incredible things. And, you know, it was one of these guys that, you know, if he was going to do something, he wanted to do it properly. And uh, he was just one of the boys as well. It was a team effort as far as he was concerned. A lot of the time people do become very specialised in what they do and they, they focus on that and that's, that's all they do. But Colin just seemed to have this ferocious appetite, this determination, and he would turn his hand to anything. I mean, how does it make you feel now, and Margaret as well, when people come and tell you stories about Colin and about you know how he impacted on their lives? It makes you very proud. It's a fantastic achievement, and uh, I'm sure he would have continued with the Dakar. I mean, that today was fantastic, uh, and so you know, thank thank you very much for that. And... I probably won't take up the offer of coming and cycling with you. <laughs> anytime you want, Jimmy. Anytime. Despite leaving the WRC. Colin continued to follow his dreams and to push himself even further. By 2006, he was back in Scotland planning a return to rallying, but as a budding entrepreneur. He designed a purpose-built rally car called the McRae R4. This concept vehicle was to be aimed at the semi-professional market. After years of work, he debuted the car in 2007. But the R4 project was to remain unfinished. Former world champion rally driver Colin McRae is feared dead, along with three other people after a helicopter crash near his home in Lanarkshire. Colin McRae's five-year-old son and two family friends were also killed. Today, the fatal accident inquiry ruled that the deaths would have been avoided if Colin McRae had not taken unnecessary and unsafe risks by flying too low, too fast. It states, for a private pilot such as Mr McRae, lacking the necessary training, experience or requirement to do so, embarking upon such demanding, low-level flying in such difficult terrain was imprudent, unreasonable and contrary to the principle of good airmanship. It was really, really sad. I really felt, you know, I miss him. I miss him a lot. In a statement, McRae's father, Jimmy, said he was an inspiration and role model to motorsport fans the world over. Come to pay tribute, fans and friends of Colin McRae, champion rally driver and sporting hero. It was a very long night just remembering all those great scenes of Colin and his rally car and uh, great memories together. It's an absolutely, you know, massive loss to motorsport and all these friends and family. The circumstances of the crash are well documented. <laughs> but I wanted Jimmy to know that his son will always have a place in motorsport history. It's hard to express the effect his life has had on so many people and the legacy that's left behind, you know, the, the generation that he inspired that are still rallying now, but also the generation just seeing him as this, this icon and true legend of the sport. To be honest, I don't think Colin just realised, you know, what, what type of following he had. Young, younger generation drivers that were here today, they've all played the games, and it's, uh, it's maybe a way that people have got started in the sport, which is it's really an honour. The term legend gets used, I think, too much these days, but I think it applies absolutely wholeheartedly um, for Colin. So it makes me proud, you know, that he has left that legacy. Five years after Colin's untimely death, I'm going to recreate his most inspiring victory by driving the same rally stage that he clinched the 1995 world title on. It does bring it home just how, how short life is and, and the, the way that he lived his life. He, he tried to enjoy every moment of it and make the most of it. And, you know, it, it's the one thing that comes across every person you meet who knew Colin. They say the same thing. He just had this passion for life and, you know, it, it was infectious. As a top cyclist, I'm used to endless training. 
but I'm not sure if anything can prepare me for the challenge that awaits. Taking control of a genuine WRC Subaru Impreza. In the hands of a professional, this finely tuned four-wheel drive beast is capable of breakneck speeds no matter what terrain you throw at it. The stakes couldn't be higher. But fortunately, I'll have Colin's co-driver from 1995 by my side, wow. Derek Ringer. Wow. Derek, Derek, great to meet Hi, Chris, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Fantastic. This is your car today. This is it. This is the iconic WRC car. See this delivery. This, this is Colin McRae to me. This is, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, pretty intimidated and quite, quite scared, but really looking forward to it. What should I expect in terms of a step up from, from the, the Sunbeam to this, this monster here? Well, it's, it would be like going from a Shetland pony to a, a thoroughbred <laughs> racehorse. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Very excited, but a little bit nervous. Just want to keep it on there. <laughs> keep it upright, keep it off its roof, and uh, just not damage the car, but hopefully have a lot of fun. It's just a massive honour to be out there and to get this opportunity to drive um, alongside Derek and, and to drive in the seat that, that Colin used to drive in and do the best I can to, to do him proud and, and to, to do Jimmy proud. OK, Chris, uh, we're just about ready to go. I've got yep. the notes here. It's quite slippy in places today, but um, yeah. we've got some fast corners, like here, we've got uh, five left. I was finally ready for the drive of my life. Power's on. I just hoped I could make Jimmy Push proud. It. And then, where's the button? Five, four, three, two, one, go! 174 right plus. Just snagged it a little bit. Got the dips of that pretty quickly. Very good. As I attempted to tame the Impreza, I suddenly understood something Colin once said. If in doubt, flat out. It's a kind of mixed emotions coming to the end of this this whole journey, this whole experience of you know meeting Colin's teammates, his his crew, his family, his friends. Absolutely, yeah. still grinning. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me through the windscreen with the, with the teeth that's poking through the smile <laughs> and the tongue sticking out <laughs> when I concentrate. <laughs> I've had such a great time; it's been fantastic, and, and you know I'm sad that it's over, but but also sad that Colin's not here to to be part of it all. You know his legend lives on. Still to come tonight on BBC HD, the first of our new series, The Genius of Invention. That's coming up next.